Greetings, everybody, on behalf of Bombay Orthopedic Society. Bombay Orthopedic Society is one of the oldest societies in India, and Vairok is it is it annual conference. This is the fifty sixth Vairok, and this year we have labelled it as Vairok Global, where we have invited societies across the globe, and we are happy to inform you that more than seventy societies are participating at Vairok Global. I really thank Slard for participating at Vairok Global on behalf of my president, Dr. Sangeet Gawale, and Dr. Vishal Kundani, my co-organizing secretary, and the entire BOS executive council. I thank you again and welcome you for Vairok Global. With this, I'll hand it over to Dr. Mahesu, president of Slard. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for Wire Global, assessing them for this kind invitation. We are the current president of SLAR. You know, this Latin American Society of Atrophy, Joint Replacement and Sport Medicine. Uh, we have more than 5,000 members, more than 22 countries in Latin America. And it's a pleasure to present uh, Dr. Daniel Zulittel, uh, our scientific director uh, in this uh, very important webinar with uh, excellent uh, faculties. Daniel. Let's start introducing uh, our slide speakers. And I'm very glad to be with my, my friends, Dr. Uh, Felipe Toro, who is Chief of Orthopedic Department of uh, the Clinic Alemana of Santiago. He's a professor of orthopedics of the same clinic. And he was the Latin American president of the Shoulder and Elbow Society and the Chilean Society. And, and he's an associate editor of Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery. Ivan? Uh, he's the editor of the Acta Ortopedica Mexicana, one of the biggest uh, journals in Mexico. And he also was the president of the AMECRA, the Mexican Society of uh, Arthroscopy. So we are also very glad that I'm, he's here. And also Dr. Mauricio Largacha, who is from the University Javeriana of uh, Bogota, Colombia and it's a strong shoulder surgeon. So now we pass to Dr. Sassinder who will help me with our next speakers. Thank you, Dr. Daniel. Thank you, Dr. Mestu and Dr. Ashok for making this happen. Um, I'm Dr. Sassinder, I'm consultant shoulder and elbow, uh, uh, knee arthroscopy surgeon. Let me introduce our faculty. Dr. K. N. Subramanian is a shoulder and knee surgeon with fellowship from UK and Canada. He is currently consultant arthroscopy surgeon at Velamal Hospitals and is also past president and past secretary of the Tamil Nadu Arthroscopy Society and Madurai Arthroscopy Society. He has extensive experience in shoulder surgeries and will be very valuable for our discussions today. And Dr. Sujit Jose is consultant orthopedic surgeon at MOSC Medical College in Kerala with special interest in arthroscopy and joint surgeries. He is the first surgeon in India, in South India to perform arthroscopic lethargy. Welcome Dr. Sujit Jos. And over to Dr. Daniel again. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen and I would like to, sorry. Okay, I would like to tell you that everything here will be about my, my population. My population is 60, 65% of rugby players. I'm a third generation orthopedic surgeon. I live in the same city, state and area and same consultation area. So what you will see expands maybe in years. And maybe you will see some uh, x-ray that they are not very good because I could have seen the patient at one year and then at six years and 
they are not very perfect, but I will try to to explain everything and I would like you to say what you have done. Sorry. Okay, so. We have some issue, okay, perfect. Okay, let's start. This is case one. This is uh, 23 years old from a local rugby club, 90 kilos, 185, not, not that big. <clears throat> he was done uh, in 215, a Bristol procedure. And first of all, I would like to, to ask the panel if they think that the Bristol procedure could have a little more osteolysis or, or not. I will start with Dr. Sassinder. So what are your thoughts? Do you think that Bristol is has a, a more percentage of pseudoarthrosis or not? Um, thank you. I don't have specific experience with Bristol procedure, so I'm not able to comment. Okay, Ivan? Yes. Well, uh, here in Mexico, we used to perform Bristol surgery during the 90s. Uh, my guess is we don't have any um, osteolysis around, but I have to be true. Some of the times the patients feel so well that we never do a proper follow-up. So my, since my point of view is that Bristol may be uh, offer a less contact area than other bone blocks surgeries. So um, it's, it's all that I can comment. I don't have enough information about osteolysis. Dr. Sujit, briefly, what do you have, are your thoughts? Yeah, again, uh, in, in India, we, have, we used to do a lot of Bristos in 80s and 90s, and we see complications of Bristos which were done uh, earlier at, the, at those times. In Bristow, uh, there is no reported, uh, I'm, I've never seen a paper on the osteolysis about on Bristow, but then uh, the, the positioning of the graft should be more accurate in, uh, in a Bristow to give a good stability to the shoulder because it's a very small bone block, unlike the Let RJ where we have uh, the, the bigger bone block uh, supporting. And uh, in this case, okay, we'll go to the discussion afterwards. Yes, please. Okay, so we, we, we will move on because this could be long. So 10 months, he was starting to, to play and he got some, some kind of pain. And you see this, you see that graft. And uh, at two years, he still has some pain and you see a graph like this, and the uh, uh, screws start to bend. So Felipe, what, what do you do with a patient like this? First, when you see at 10, at 10 months and still uh, start the osteolysis, you do something or you leave it like that, or, or you do a special images for just trying to know what would happen with this graph. I think that I, prefer to have a CT scan uh, during the first problem that we saw with the, with the graph. And probably uh, if he is a rugby player, he need the, the, uh, the bone healing. So I, I, I think that he will not um, become stable uh, in his career. So I think that I will revise him very promptly. Mauricio, if you see that, that man at, at 10 months, do you do revise it or do you think that it can work? I think it depends on the symptoms because if the symptoms are subluxation that are very usual in about five to 10% of this surgery, probably you, you can go on. But if the no, symptoms no, got... are real instability, then you need to revise him. No, no, at, at, at 10 months, he was completely asymptomatic. Right. At... So, so, so if he is asymptomatic, he can do well with only physical therapy and strengthening because it's only subluxation, probably uh, the 
the symptoms right now at two years. So I think I will, I will stop the surgery and, and wait a little bit with strengthening. Okay, so this guy at uh, two years got pain. So he came, he came back with pain, no symptom of instability, nothing. And uh, so the, the consultation was because of pain. If it's pain, what do you do? Conservative treatment, you try to do an arthroscopy to see what's happening, or you don't do occasional pain, not every day's pain. Dr. Sobranian, what are your, your thoughts about? Dr. Sobranian. Good morning, can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Good morning, Daniel. So this patient, from the beginning, what I have seen is uh, only x-rays. I have not seen any CT scan or MRI so far. So I don't know yes. exactly how much was the bone loss exactly. And the first x-ray that, that I saw was having one screw with a little bit of gap between the uh, glenoid bone and also the bone graft. So uh, I don't know the, how much the surgical technique was there in that, in that particular situation. Now he is two years down the line. When you say he is asymptomatic, I assume that he is having full range of movement. Is that correct? They don't have uh, subluxation or instability. He got some pain while he's uh, doing press feet or when he's tagging. Just a little bit of pain, nothing more than that. Yeah, but for a rugby player, even a little bit of pain is a little significant for him. I would have assumed, is it not? Because no. he wants full functioning shoulder joint. Yep. Uh, but so, he's playing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, he has got graft astrolysis already with uh, screw is, uh, uh, the shape of the screw is altered, which means screw is uh, either broken or is at least it has deformed now. So, he will need revising. Maybe he may not be needing today because he's asymptomatic now, but he is going to become symptomatic at a later stage. So he will need revising. For that, I will need full set of investigations in the form of CT scan and MRI scan to assess how big is the lesion and how the joint surface is looking like now because you might be having into osteoarthritis now because you're slowly going to the phase of degeneration over the cartilage area there. And then I'll make a plan uh, to do a, another uh, bone block procedure or what exactly I want to do. I would see, I would comment only after seeing the further investigations. Okay, so the patient ran away and it came us <laughs> at six years. And you see this, and now it's mine, and I got the CT scan. And still it got no instability at all. He got only mild pain, and you see this. This is your bone block. Is he this still is... playing rugby? Yes, of course. He never okay. quit. Right. Uh, very lucky chap, very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so now we got pain a little bit more, but uh, he's a little bit more concerned because he has been six years with occasional pain. So now, uh, Mauricio, what are your thoughts? What do you do with this patient? So, so I think it depends on the physical exam, but I saw that a lot before with two screws and lethargies. And the first reason of the pain is the screw. So if he's not unstable in the physical exam and the pain is interior and you can feel it in the physical exam, I will remove only the screw and that's it. Felipe, what are your thoughts? Uh, the, the mic is muted, Felipe. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I, I said I agree with Mauricio. The, the screw can be part of the problem of the, this pain. And uh, I have removed it in a couple of patients, the screw, because uh, in the physical examination, you can feel the pain uh, in the anterior aspect. And on the MRI, on the ultrasound, this patient had some little fluid, some uh, inflammatory aspect. So it seems to be a good idea. The, the piece of bone seems to be healed in the anterior inferior glenoid, so maybe it's the reason that it's still um, stable. In the CT scan, it look, look better aren't, than in the x-ray. Aren't you scared that when you remove this bend, 
screw could cause some damage in the block. Dr. Sujit, what are your thoughts? Your microphone. Uh, I'd agree to the previous um, uh, panelists. Uh, the, the, the pain, I would like to evaluate the pain further to rule out the other causes, yes, the, the superior labrum, the posterior labrums. And, and uh, as I see on the CT, the uh, graft is slightly more low than um, uh, the, the ideal position. And the screw is uh, definitely backing out and uh, uh, the, the graft seems to be uniting well. So, but the positioning of the graft is uh, well in line with the uh, glenoid phase. And if the, the screw is the reason for the pain, occasional pain, especially on activity, then uh, the screw can be a culprit and uh, I, I would uh, prefer to uh, take that out. But the graft, uh, I feel, uh, can stay on as uh, there is no instability. Dr. Sujit, aren't you scared what then, while removing the screw as it bent, could damage the graft and do it will be worse the removal than letting like this? Yes, uh, that is an important point. I would uh, try to uh, take it out in case I'm not able to get out. I'd use an instrument to just uh, cut off the screw at the, at, the, at the base or at the topmost part of the uh, graft if it is not coming out easily. Okay, that was my thought and I have done like you said. So mm -hmm. <laughs> let's move to other case. But Daniel, sorry, but did you yes. try to remove this, this screw or you just uh, went to cut it? I try very gently to remove. And when I start moving the screw, I start moving everything. I said, <laughs> my goodness, and cut it and leave it like that. Daniel, still... a, good, a good tip, Daniel, is if the bending is at the half of the screw. So if you want to remove it, one good way to do it, and I did a lot before, is to cut the screw um, at the third, the proximal third. So when you turn it, it will not turn at the bend side. So then it will turn um, right in the circumference. So you don't want to turn the screw from the head as the other person um, said yeah, before. You, that, you want that... to cut it and then turn it out. Yes, but the thing is that you see in, it's very, the, the idea is perfect and it's, I understand it. But in this case, the screw was in the bone and it was very difficult to, to do any form, any, anything more than cut it just, just at the part that bone was, at, um, sorry, where it was at the bone. So I couldn't access a little bit further. So I did, didn't do anything and it was no chondromalacy and it was another thing okay let's let's move this guy it's a huge guy and at four months uh he's a big guy who was in the 19 uh, pro, uh, national team who are the pre pumas and they are people that are trying to move forward with all his strength big guy 110 that at 19 years means that maybe he will be 120 kilos at at 21 so it's a big guy and you see this if you take a look at the right circle this change in the bone the bone was perfect nothing was wrong in fact, he was uh, just in, in the training camp. If you see this, you think, what do you do? You wait, you do a CT scan. You think that you do a CT scan that what you see in the CT scan, what you do to make you sure they won't be a pseudoarthrosis and we will have a trouble. And what do you do with the patient who is, who is willing to go to his camp trials again? So, Ivan? Yes, this is my, my first talk is I have to talk with the patient because we are in a very dangerous line. He's asymptomatic, but if he continues with their uh, level of activity, there, ha there is a big chance to have a, a uh, dislocation. 
in but my conduct right now is make an a CT scan and since my point of view maybe the screw placements are a little bit um, different so I have to warn my patient you can do everything but there is a high chance of a new dislocation and we have to redo a surgery with another bone block technique. Dr. Sasinder, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I would agree to that because uh, even though the patient is asymptomatic, there is a lot of gap and he is into professional sports. So the implant is going to fail one day or other. So a CT scan can help to identify the presence of any osteolysis. And if this was only the subsequent X-ray and the initial X-ray is not available, it can also help us to identify like uh, osteolysis after initial fixation or if the initial x-ray is also like this then it's possibly a not so good fixation so i would definitely go ahead with the revision procedure mauricio uh, do you use ct scan and what what you look when you see you use your ct scan do you really trust ct scans when you see that yeah I, I think that you should trust more ct scans so we know that x-rays are not very good in uh, following uh, graft so i think uh, it's always necessary to check a ct scan at three months after the surgery so this patient is four months after surgery he already should have a CT scan at the third um, at the third month. Okay, Doctor Sujit, what are your thoughts? Uh, the the person is only four months after surgery. Uh, I yeah. would uh, if if the person can wait, uh, I would uh, repeat a um, uh, investigation after two more months at six months. But then, uh, given the thing that he is 19 and in his, he is in his active uh, phase of his career and is willing for another procedure, then uh, we could uh, go for a revision uh, at this time uh, after discussing with the patient. Yes, he's completely asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. Completely. Yes, that's the reason I first said yes. We could wait for a couple of months, rehab him, repeat the uh, imaging, uh, especially with a, T a CT, which would tell us about union. And then uh, you could uh, go ahead with uh, the, the bone block uh, with a uh, iron hibernate or a distal TV allograft. Okay, Felipe, what are your thoughts? I, um, I think that I revised this patient even if he is asymptomatic because the inferior screw is out of the bone. I, I always have a CT scan when I have a doubt in the, in the, in the X-ray. So in this case, I, of course, I will ask for a CT scan. Uh, we don't have the, the post-op uh, x-ray. That can be helpful also to understand what happened with the graft and with the screw because the inferior screw uh, has some osteolysis and is uh, in a down direction. So I think that this patient will have problem and uh, I will not wait uh, more months uh, to do a, a, a revision. I propose a revision with the patient and, 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 and his family. Okay, I thought everything as you have told me, the only issue it was that he was, uh, became pro at the same time and he moved from the country. And then later on, he sent me two years, his x-rays and he's completely asymptomatic. He's playing high level rugby and uh, he's doing fine. So that's it. And let's move to the other one. Okay. This one is, it's now. He has uh, been operated not by me uh, about two years and a half ago, three years. And at seven months, he was starting uh, four years ago, sorry. He was starting to came uh, with, with his train and you see that broken screw, broken leg screw. And uh, 
by this time he was told that he could go away because he got uh, the screw was in position and at four years now he's like this completely asymptomatic and uh, okay for you it's a revision right now or if it's asymptomatic you you will go on in the x in the ct scan you see the same thing it's it's a uh, you see a gap but it's completely asymptomatic four years later of the surgery dr sujit uh, i would definitely like to see a ct scan in this case uh, okay. not with and uh, the graft appears to be uh, slightly away uh, and uh, it, it appears to be slightly proud also from the glenoid phase in this uh, but he's asymptomatic and uh, i would like to see the uh, the uh, the humeral head cartilage in this condition uh, an mri would do that and if there is an impingement uh, significant and the graft is uh, uh, in non union uh, i would again discuss with the patient he, if he wants to go for active sports like a rugby you said 50% of the or 60% of the population are, are rugby players yes uh, i would go for revision then but then here in india we have uh, patients uh, doing lighter sports uh, 90% of them do maybe badminton that is a overhead sport they want to do uh, i would uh, probably wait on them uh felipe yes well if he is now 3 year or 4 year after surgery and he is asymptomatic uh, probably i will control him in the future uh, i also ask for a ct scan always a ct scan uh but now no i i, I think that i will do nothing just uh, control him mauricio i agree because you sometimes uh, see a lot of these patients with failure fixation and with the soft uh, fibrosis of the surgery it depends on the technique you can see that they still are very stable even if they have broken graft or screw so if he is asymptomatic and the physical exam is normal i will do nothing only wait dr subramanian uh, this patient is asymptomatic if it is asymptomatic i won't touch this patient normally because uh, uh, by doing something we can harm the patient right now he has got graft osteolysis over there but there may be fibrous union that's why he is not having any symptoms the only problem may be that metal work that is inside it might cause problem in future when he gets trouble when he becomes symptomatic that time i'll go and remove the screws otherwise i will not touch him okay my daniel see si. may i do a question for the panel yeah um do you all use cannulate screw or solid screw do you think that this is a difference okay so If i'm allowed to answer i most of the time it depends on the budget of the patient but my special preference is solid screws what i found with this cannulated screws there is a high risk of bending or some technical troubles during the surgery like broken pins like broken drills during during the surgery that's why i prefer using solid screws Dr. Sujit does atroscopic lateralization so he doesn't he use cannulated screws i think yes i do yes i do and uh, to ask dr uh, ivan uh, if even if we use a, a a solid screw if the graft goes for a non union then would the screw hold uh, so are we um, uh, looking at the bony union more than the implant holding it so uh, i would um, uh, yes my experience is not that huge maybe 4 years of astral lethargies uh, but then um, i never had screw break breakages yes if the graft unites well uh, i get ct scans at 6 months before sports and uh, um, uh, i use uh, cantilever screws always okay my my point and i would like a brief reflection of, of all of you is we have seen three different patients all of them has bent or broken screws and uh, basically they're still doing fine and what we need to be really sure or what you think that we, we should do to to be sure what to do because more myself and you most of these guys you have 
done a revision because the, the, it seems a pseudoarthrosis, it's a broken screw. But for example, in, in this case, it's still holding. So how will be your efforts uh, where you are going to, to be more true to decide a, a revision? Because for me, sometimes it's not easy to decide and I have seen so many times broken screws with good uh, um, active sportsmen and contact sportsmen. I'm still I'm not certain which uh, type of images do I know to be completely sure what I have to do. I don't know if I'm clear. Uh, Mauricio, what are your thoughts? Yes, I, I think you need, as I said before, you need always at three months before letting the patient go to sports or to the activities, a CT scan always. And if you have doubt, you can um, complete the CT scan with uh, 3D reconstruction. It's very useful as you um, show us uh, before. And the other part is the physical exam. So physical exam and history here, it's very important. It's not the same patient with symptoms and positive findings in the physical exam, and then you go and see the images. But in those three patients, everything was normal. So I will uh, stand even if the CT scan show uh, screws that are broken. Felipe? Well, yes, these are very interesting cases, Daniel. Uh, and I think that these patients were very lucky. But um, in, in my experience, the contact sport when uh, the latter J, I do latter J fail, um, almost 50% has some symptom of instability. Um, but to prevent that, yes, I think that you have to be very strict in the uh, surgical techniques, in a nice approach. You have to see well the, the, the neck of the glenoid to prepare it well. And, um, and after surgery, as uh, Mauricio said, um, we do a clinical examination for uh, allow the patient to play and, uh, and a good image. We, not always a CT scan, but in, in this kind of people, yes, a CT scan. In the non regular people, no, but in the sport, contact sport patient, I, I also ask for a CTE before to allow them to come back to play. Dr. Sovranian, what are your thoughts? Uh, at this stage, uh, this uh, asymptomatic, uh, I would definitely get a CT scan to assess the current status of it. See how bad, the, because he is also getting uh, degenerative arthritis over the anterior inferior part of the glenoid. So get a CT scan and say, assess how the things are going on. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the uh, most easy case. So this, uh, this guy, 20 years, he had at age uh, 17, one arthroscopic uh, reconstruction. At 19, he got a lethargy procedure. He got two dislocations, still wants to play rugby. And you see this. Of course, I will give you the CT scans as you will probably ask for me. You see the totally broken screw on the back, and when you do the uh, three three D reconstruction, you see this. You see both screws on the back that are completely broken. And uh, okay, so now we are here. Sorry, and I would like to ask. Uh, sometimes when you start doing these procedures. Uh, we have broken screws and what do you do? What are you doing to be prepared with this kind of patients that really are difficult to operate on? You first, what kind of graft you will use? So uh, Ivan, how you will go to surgery? Well, I, I, I recommend as a first source of graft using autologous bone uh, iliac crest uh, as a first option 
for revision graft. And because it is more prone to heal and it will give me a very good contact surface that, that is what it, we're looking for in the revision surgery. Like a quick comment on, on this specific case, in my opinion, the graft is a little bit medial and that's why are suffering uh, this kind of osteolysis and then the broken the broken screws, and probably was the, the the main the main part. And the other issue that we have to take in count is the time that we take for rehabilitation. Sometimes the pressure of the patient is too much for an early return to sports. So I, re I will recommend this kind of patient on the revision surgery, wait at least six months in order to return to sports, to get really sure of the bone block healing, and then he can achieve the full range of motion and the full strength that he needs for his sport. Uh, Mauricio, uh, how you usually prepare for this surgery? What are your thoughts of the screws? What kind of bone graft? Yeah, I think, what, what I, I, I think there's three points that are important. The first one is you need an, inst an instrument like a Midas Rex to remove uh, even bone and screws. So you can cut the bone and cut the interface of the screw. So a Midas is very important. We are very lucky that we have a bone bank here. So you can talk with the patient and decide either, as Ivan said, with very good healing, um, use an autograph of the iliac crest or to go to a distal tibia from a bank. We, we are very lucky. And the third thing, I will go definitely with buttons and no with screws. So it's easier to fix that uh, new surgery with, um, with uh, buttons and not with screws. Thanks. Dr. Sujit, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, the removal of the implant would be the uh, first uh, concern and uh, uh, this patient had an uh, initial around uh, uh, 45 or 40% 40 um, bone loss and uh, 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 there is one screw head which is very prominent which uh, requires removal of course and uh, the graft is medial and uh, uh, my preference of graft would be the uh, autologous uh, uh, iliac crest bone graft. And if not, we have a bone graph, a bone banks coming up, not in Kerala yet, but in, from Maharashtra or in, from uh, Bangalore, we uh, get the graphs and uh, um, the distal TBI again would be a, a, a choice. And my fixation uh, would be a, a, a screws or a, a can go for the, the, the fiber tape uh, circlage, which we do uh, uh, for our patients now. Dr. Subramian. Yes, this patient has got almost more than 30% bone loss now. If we take out all these uh, graft out and the screw out, there will be big, big bone loss there. Uh, this, all these interventions will happen only if he's dislocating, okay? If he's not dislocating at all, then I would not do anything. So assuming he's dislocating a few times, so we go for iliac crest bone graft and fix it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sasinder, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think we should definitely go ahead with the uh, implant removal first and then uh, my first uh, choice will be an autologous tricortical iliac crest bone graft. Um, yeah, that should be good. Okay, Felipe. Yes, the same. I will use, I will use uh, iliac crest and uh, probably a um, screw. Now I am using, I am in a clinical trial with my patient and I am using only one screw because the screw is a problem in the latter year. Um, I use one screw and a set clutch with the, one of the suture anchor. And um, I have get very nice results and with healing. Um, uh, and maybe the bottom is a good idea. I haven't used it bottom, but uh, I agree with Mauricio that maybe it can be a good idea, but Ilya Crest. My sure. Uh, one one quick answer, all of you. Any thoughts about doing something with the capsule? You will have no capsule at, at all. And uh, when you put the, the block here, you also have a raw surface, except if you analog with cartilage. 
Any thought about doing something uh, like allografting or capsule or you do it nothing? Felipe? Uh, probably nothing. Just the, just the, the bone. Sujit? Uh, I, I always try to repair the capsule, uh, especially when I'm doing an arthroscopic uh, procedure. And uh, in, in this case, uh, I can see the bone graft has united and one of the screws is broken and it is pointing into the joint, yes. If the patient's problem is just pain and impingement, uh, is there a role, I, was, I want to ask the panelists, is there a role of uh, taking the screw out and repairing the capsule at the edge of the, the native uh, glenoid? Uh, because that's what we do in uh, arthroletages, which will give a, a sheet of tissue. Uh, no no allograft capsule uh, for me. Mauricio? In this patient, I will not go through the subscap approach and I will go through a subscapular lateral tenotomy because going in this kind of revisions um, as the first time is very tough and very difficult. It's very difficult to go and see well and take out everything. And then after it's very difficult to close it. So I will change my approach and I will go to a lateral tenotomy and not to a, a subscapular split. Okay, so this is what we have done. I, I am very lucky that I have a very clever guy with me that do this. So he do a reconstruction by himself, he's an orthopedic surgeon. And he first tried to compare what we need. So he first designed what type of graft uh, do we need. And much more than this, he can design and do a special guide. We will see that. He do the design and then he do a special guide to cut exactly what we need in the crest, iliac crest, that we want our decision. And he also do a special guide. So when we put the drill, it moves out of the place where the screws are. So when we use this guide, it's so accurate that you can spare the screws. So this is the surgery. This is the guide for the iliac crest. Uh, this is the crest. And this is a special guide designed for doing the procedure. Here's the procedure while it's doing it. And now you see how it's done. And then we decided to put a graft, uh, a fascia lata graft. I don't know for sure if this will work, but in my mind, it's good. So we put a iliac crest graft and this is done. This is, a, this is at uh, six months. Now we're at one year, we'll do the CT scan for doing how it, how it works. Of course, for the moment he's fine, but this is what we do. So, Let's move to the last one. Nice. <laughs> Just, we got to finish with this. This is a 30 years old guy who I, I have done the surgery 16 years ago. And he was perfect all the time. He moved out of the country, then he returned back. And now he's doing CrossFit and then he started with some pain. So at 16 years later, he came with me and I see this. And this is your CT scan. <laughs> and he has pain. So shortly I have done the, the arthroscopy and you see the chondropathy and you see that this, uh, this is fibrosis, as you said, and I can touch the, the bone on the other side and it's stable, but fibrotic and well, what do you do? Felipe? Uh, I think that in this patient, um, I discuss uh, with him uh, and treat it like an osteoarthritis. I, 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 the only instability here is not important. He's 38 now, he's stable. Uh, he played rugby for uh, several years, can be the reason.
sort of the of the osteoarthritis. So as a, any patient with an osteoarthritis, depending of uh, the level of pain and uh, range of motion, uh, I probably uh, start with some conservative uh, treatment. Uh, and in case that it uh, get worse and worse and worse, then uh, you, I had to do an, uh, an uh, arthroplasty, a stemless arthroplasty. But at the beginning, just conservative treatment, I think that to do the, the arthroscopy was a good idea. You can clean a little bit, uh, and, but, but nothing, nothing more at that time. Dr. Sasinda, what, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think the trick to the treatment for this patient is to identify what is the cause of the pain, uh, whether the pain is associated with uh, instability, even though there is no... No, he, got, he has no, no, no instability. He never has instability. Yeah. <laughs> never. So He's pain. That's a good thing. So as Dr. Philip said, the treatment should be addressed at the arthritis rather than the graft or what is visible in the X-ray or the CT scan. I would uh, go ahead with uh, treating the arthritis, maybe a debridement and uh, bone marrow aspirate concentrate induction initially and uh, good therapy and wait and watch. Dr. Sujit, what are your thoughts about the, this patient? Yeah, I agree with Dr. Philippe and Dr. Sasinder. Yes, this patient uh, needs uh, more of treatment for his, uh, the cartilage loss. And uh, I suppose his uh, range of motion is good and uh, he's not unstable. So I would uh, treat the uh, osteoarthritis and since you've scoped it, yes, uh, you would have found something there and uh, the, the, cart uh, the cartilage appears to be uh, uh, rough and uh, uh, frayed and uh, I would do a, a debridement and uh, add on something like a biological for, uh, with a BMAC or something like that, yes. Dr. Subramian, what are your thoughts? This is a really critical situation now, which we come across in patients. Uh, who are also having uh, arthroscopic bank art repair with metal screws getting into arthritis stage now. So this is a say where you have to sit and talk to the patient now. We are not worried about stability now, we are worried about arthritis. And we go with step-by approach, step-by-step -step approach. First will be chondroprotective procedures like PRP, stem cell, all these things. And then if the patient does not have good relief and keeps on having pain, then we should think about replacement. The replacement is and it's going to be stemless shoulder replacement. But he, considering he's being only 38 year old, I wouldn't go for jump into replacement straight away. But this is very important for the patient to understand what the situation of shoulder is going to be at a later stage. So none of the treatment has got a super promising effect apart from replacement. But replacement is not good enough because he's only 38. So we have to explain all this to the patient and go ahead with the procedures like first is cartilage preservation procedures like stem cell or PRP. If they doesn't work, then you go for a replacement. That will be my line of action. Okay, uh, Ivan? Yes, I, I just, I agree with, with all the comments, but I would like to, to add, this is the future of the patients that we treat less than 20 years with those procedure and arthroscopic uh, stability surgeries. So we have to prepare the patient for the next stage. My first approach in a 38, year old with no instability, just mild pain is, I agree, and the scope, and then make the debridement and try some uh, oral chondritin or glucosamine, maybe hyaluronic acid uh, injections every year, but maybe when the patient get close to the 50s or the 55 years old, he needs a replacement. The main issue is not the surgery, what are we going to do? The main issue is explain the patient that he has to stop. This is because they are very aggressive with his shoulder. They're trying to make, to lift very heavy weights, keep very active. So that's what we have to advise. Slow down very carefully in order to, to, to not create um, a misunderstanding. Most of these patients are uh, resist a lot of pain, but if we operate this uh, osteoarthritis in very, very advanced stage, could be a problem for the recovery 
in the 50s and 60s. So maybe this is the, the main problem, not the surgery, we, uh, but the psychological aspect in, with, with our patients. Mauricio, we are finishing. Uh, I will leave you one, one, one more thought. Uh, till, till what is your line said? Till what, how do you wait with these guys to, to put it in a replacement surgery? And another little thing for all of you, do you have any experience with axillary? Okay, as we miss Daniela, I will continue. And um, I can tell you that this patient probably- This patient. I, I, I can tell you that probably this patient is with pain at the extremes. He right now is not by concave. So I agree with Felipe, I will go first and delay the surgery with physical therapy, treatment and medication and probably visco supplementation. And then if you decide that that fail, I will go for a CAM procedure. So I think the indication for this patient is a CAM procedure with everything that included and to wait um, until the end to offer him an arthroplasty option. It depends on the patient, the pain at rest, and um, how bad he is for daily living. You think that axillary nerve neurolysis adds to the procedure or something or? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I, I think this kind of patients are in pain at the extremes because the capsule and because the osteophyte and the limitation of the range of motion. So I think only doing capsular releases, take out that inferior um, osteophyte and take care of the bicep, biceps, it, it's enough. I don't think that with this kind of X-ray, you should do anything to the, to the axillary nerve. Okay, well, it has been a nice discussion, very educational for me. And well, we are done. Thank you for everyone for your expertise and, and sharing with us your knowledge. Okay, Sasi. Thank you very much, Dr. Daniel. Uh, can you please stop your screen share? Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel and the whole team, Dr. Felipe, Dr. Evan, Dr. Mauricio, and my friends, Dr. Sujit and Dr. Subramanian and also Dr. Mestu. Thank you very much, everyone, on behalf of Iraq. Uh, it was a very uh, replenishing uh, meeting, uh, explaining a lot of uh, uh, planning ahead after patient's failure with uh, lethargy. It was a very good experience. Thank you so much for making this happen. Okay, Rodrigo. Thank you. Si Thank you for everybody. Excellent webinar. Uh, and, uh, thank you for the different hour uh, in the different part of the world. Uh, we know that there are very difficult hours for, for you.